Oil. That's we got right. oil out here this morning. We sure do. It's getting carried away with gold. We got crude oil coming up at 1030 Eastern time. Seems like they're already talking about it in the den. They got so API at a big draw on crude at 7.5 decline million barrels. EIA looking for a decline somewhere over around 2.5. Um, you know, before we get in there, right, let's jump around on the Bloomberg if we could, because sometimes you want to enter a... Uh, Whisper number? Yeah, let's let's see what they're looking for here and, and put our name into the hat. So the crude oil, so there we go. They are looking for, whether it's a whisper number in terms of what people like ourselves, anybody talking about, um, or they get the survey, but somewhere of a decline of 3 million barrels called right. ballpark. Um, okay, you folks in the den, put a whisper number in there. And we'll try to even it off. We'll go from... We got, we got about a couple minutes. Yeah. We, we, well, we had two minutes on the dot to, okay. to make an entry. Good. So we're going to jump back. We'll start start looking at the trades. We got yeah. two minutes. We'll remember it. We'll see if they want. So uh, the expectation is a decline of about 3 million barrels. We got crude trading at 59.22. The 11 a.m. expiration spreads. We could have an option to buy and sell with exposure from $59, so about 22 cents away. We'll jump into the, uh, excuse me, the noons. 59.50 would be our pivot point, so about 30 cents away. I was looking to see if we could get a 59.25, right? right? That would be Which your would ideal be here. So before we set it up, we'd have exposure from 59 at the 8 a.m. to 230s and 59 as well. <coughs> excuse me. So it looks like 59 is going to be our best option if you want exposure, bullish and bearish, as in you're 23 cents away, because that noon... It's going to set up at 59.50. That's almost identical, right? So, in this situation, you'd almost want to have a bullish or a bearish bias because you're either going to gain exposure from 59, or you're going to gain exposure from 59.50. Either way, you're getting about a 25 cent uh, yes. start to to the heads up. All right, we have a guess, so let's go. We're going to go back. Where are we? There we are. We got 45 seconds. Okay. They're looking for minus 4.5 million. That's good. And then, see if you can. He, he's looking for a. Uh, Gasoline, too? Yeah, but I think it'll be a drawing gasoline. Let's do a drawing gasoline. Okay. Is that in? I think it is. Let's get our gas. And what are we looking for for gas? Uh, he just said a draw. Okay. Well, it? that's good. We'll yeah. go, uh, we'll go, we'll go. We will go, we're going to go five, minus 500, all right? Okay. Okay. With Ten seconds to spare. You get action in there. Perfect. <laughs> um, so oil, man, quite a pop, right? I mean, that's where this—that's uh, where these spreads aren't exactly calibrated at the price it's trading at, because they're going to open at the price that it's trading at as that spread becomes available throughout the day. And you had oil trading at fifty-nine dollars for majority of it, which is why you have these exposures from um, fifty-nine. All the spreads setting up. But if you're bullish, not a bad trade, and that even. Uh, 59 to 62, you're getting in 26 cents above the market, but your losses are capped down at 59, you get exposure to 62. Not right. a bad trade when right. you talk about you have until 2.30. and you We've get, had the volatility in oil, right. there's no and, doubt about you that. Know, if you're directionally biased and you happen to hit it on the head, as in you're right, not a bad trade to have your losses capped 50 cents below where you're at and you get $2.50 above you. Welcome back, folks. Look at that number. Do we have a number? We do have a number, man. You got crude oil inventories falling. We should have went bigger. Go big or go home, man. <laughs> falling 12.79 million barrels. Gasoline inventories falling 996,000. That's what you can Boom. expect when you get almost a 13 million barrel build uh, draw. Yes. And you'd expected three, man. That price just jumped almost a full dollar. And, uh, Pretty cool. That's the, quite a draw. The one, the one trade that we we're possibly looking at, right? You were getting in at 59.50 in this. The market was trading about 59.25. You're already up 33, 34 dollars as this thing's ticking at 59.80, um, and it's going to trade pretty close. You're just marginal to the market right now as you're a solid almost dollar into the spread. But man, that is quite a number. And yeah, 59.25 up to 59.90 in the span of a heartbeat. And let's see if they got a. Uh, yeah, we'll see the full breakdown, man, but that, that is quite a number, and I imagine gasoline uh, inventories as well, because that's on the bottom end of that range. They might have been looking for a draw of only a couple hundred thousand to flat for gasoline. Yeah, and then uh, the XLE right now, it's up a buck 33, and uh, not stopping. No. Anyway. So, <laughs> what will be interesting here is that the 
the swing point on the XLE is uh, 6378, and we're going right after it. And it doesn't look like it's going to be an ABC up, but hey, we'll see if I uh, get the volume because that's 25.9 million there. Okay. That we're going into, and we only got 2.8 right now. If we can look at some of, so we started to check out uh, some of. The refinery they were talking about, right? Yes. Uh, let's see. So where are we? The top live. Yeah, because it was kind of cool how they were talking about when this data actually is. So here's the full breakdown, too. You have gasoline. Yeah, decline of about a million barrels. Crude, decline of 12.788. Gasoline, the estimate was pretty much flat, I think. And let's see where... Distilled, too. Big draw in distilled. Yeah, distilled missed by 2.4. That's pad 3 minus 6.2. Um, a big portion of that, but it's, it looks like it's everywhere, man, because even Cushing plus the distillate, plus the pad three, you're still not at 12.788 yet, you know? So, I mean, just constant all across the board. Uh, so the refinery, right? Yes. In, in Philadelphia. So they do a good job of kind of talking about what you can expect here coming up to this report. And so it's important to note that the weekly petroleum status report starts the period on Friday at 7.01 a.m. and ends at 7.01 a.m. the following Friday. That means last week's report might not encompass all of the fallout from the Philadelphia Energy Solutions explosion and fire. Um, and then to that point, we might not see crude imports into the U.S. East Coast taking a hit in this week's report because of uh, that refinery fire. The region's weekly average has been 794 barrels per day over the past five years. So and it might not see any effects at all for a good few weeks if they manage to resell its predominantly foreign crude imports to other refiners along the U.S. Eastern right. Seaboard. Right, because you can picture these boats are already out there right. on the way. Right, so it's interesting, right. you know. You have um, to redirect them. It's a, it's a great point a redirect just to, sell. to think about, right. And so the point being that those, those are going to come. Those are already on the way, and maybe you see an, an upsetting of the market in the next week or two as they reevaluate all that. Uh, and yeah, so S&P Energy Index, which one's that? That's spiking, that's for sure. Uh, gasoline demand, which almost got to 10 million barrels per day last week, backs off considerably. Product supply down 452,000 barrels per day to 9.47 million um, in the week ended. Let's just see. We'll check back to see how the market's still moving. So hanging up there, 59.70, yeah. we'll check back in, but quite a pop. That's and, a strong buy. And I am, I mean, this is where if, if oil, oil ever gets back to where we were or lower, then what's going on in that market exactly. for a draw like yeah. that? That would be Which is so very, cool. very yeah. weak if right. it was ever able to. I don't, I right. don't, I don't, I don't, I would be surprised. Yeah. But surprised often. On well, the, the, cool, the cool thing is that that's where the divergence would be huge, which is, you know, because oh. that shouldn't happen. It's just right. common sense. If oil can't trade higher when you have a... Uh, EIA of a 13 million barrel draw, yeah. then good luck to the Bulls, because that's a tough one. Totally. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 63. Nasdaq's up 55. S&Ps are up 6.5. And, and that uh, oil contract is hanging tough. The first move is the one that's just kind of hanging there, right? 59.70. We're up about 50 cents from that price. Boy, you could have thought that it was going to go a little bit higher, man, considering we got 70 cents of movement almost in the span of a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we're... And quite a draw. We're, we're looking, yeah, 12.7 million barrel draw. Um, we'll see if we can hit $60. We'll see.